Welcome back to the last session of the day where I want to talk with you about headcount and personal cost planning with SAP Analytics Cloud. We will talk about why you will need such a tool as SAC and share some insights on how Mitsubishi Power has done this with their very complex headcount planning with SAC. Let's have a look at the agenda of my session. So first of all, I would like to talk about really, do we need SAC or is it still fine to go with Excel? My answer, probably you might already have guessed that, no, Excel is not sufficient anymore. Then we will see that even very complex calculations and planning processes can be put into a tool such as SAP Analytics Cloud based on the use case for Mitsubishi Power. And as a last step, I will give you a short demo from our own Westernacher system so that you do not only have the theory of how such a planning process could look like in SAC, but also have a real data uh, demo. So, why do I at all talk about this? Excel has been in place for so many years. All you, basically everyone in finance is used to use Excel as their standard tool. Using pivot table, different sheets, graphs, it's so easy for everyone. And many companies still use it as a number one planning tool. But on the other side, it's not sufficient anymore. Yeah, the study from Bark really came up with the result that if you use Excel for your planning, you will have 25% longer duration of your planning process, which is a huge amount if you consider how long departments are blocked with this planning processes. Where does this come from? Well, think about a company with 50, 100, 200 cost centers. And now do a planning in Excel with these. You set up a sheet for each cost center. You send these sheets out to the individual cost center owners. They fill in their data. They send it back to you. Well, then there was uh, an update to the planning uh, requirements or a mistake was in. You send it back. You get it back. Well, you already have two versions. 400 files, if you take 200 cost centers, they all need somehow to be consolidated, always nice Excel formulas that you will uh, type in. And it's very easy to come up with an error in this and having the overview of all this, having the long duration of this process, has everyone submitted all the data that is needed? It's a horror. It takes ages and blocks so many resources. At the same time, your C-level CFOs, CEOs, they want to simulate. Real time, in a meeting, your CFO will ask you, hey, what if I change my travel costs and cut it down by 10%? What is if I reduce uh, FTE by 5%? Hmm, how do you do this with Excel? I can tell you it's not easy at all. It will take you like, okay, um, hang on, dear CFO, I will go back and in two days time, I will come back because I needed to change all the formulas and I needed to ensure that the data is correct. And then I can present to you the result. Not acceptable today anymore by the current C-levels. They expect it to be right now in this meeting to have the result. They want to simulate it because the next question will be, ah, Perhaps 10% uh, travel and entertainment cut was too much. Let's go for 5%. Hmm. The whole loop starts again. <laughs> and it's a whole nightmare. I've done it myself and I don't want to go back to that anymore. So that is why you need to pick the right tool. Otherwise, you will be stuck in these endless loops 
that do not provide a big value add. You might think, well, these complex planning processes that Mark is talking about are not true and not real. Well, let me give you an example related to headcount and personal cost planning from Mitsubishi Power. Here we implemented a full financial planning with SAP Analytics Cloud. And I would like to give you just some rough figures so that you can already think about for your own sake how complex this planning process is. Um, and let me take it up front. Why do I talk at all about headcount and personal cost planning? Well, for most companies, personal cost is a major chunk of their total cost. Take Westernacher. Well, our total costs are mainly driven by the people because it's a consultant business. It's a service business. So it's all about the people. Of course, we also have development systems and licenses, offices, but the majority of costs are the people. So here it's very important to have a good planning process. And something similar is also true for Mitsubishi Power. They also have had and have still a very complex planning process more than 700 employees, more than 50 cost centers. And what makes it very special is you have more than seven different job types. So it's not just, well, I plan my headcount and I plan my FTE and then I'm done. No, this would be far too easy. You can say, well, I can plan my partial uh, part-time employees. I can plan uh, people in maternity or paternity leave, I can plan students, I can plan people that came back from retirement and still continue on working. So you can see um, just planning headcount and FTE is a simplified version of what is actually going on in many companies. All this we as Westernacher faced and we came up with a great solution how we can do this in SAC. So the source, of course, from, for all data is the ECC. Um, here you have HR data in and you can create Excel flat files for salaries. So these are the two sources, the new employees and the existing ones. What we did is that we extracted all the data for the existing employees into the BW system from Mitsubishi. New employees had to be planned with salaries. And these salaries we took in via an Excel file. And here, using this, we calculated per employee, per named employee, the individual sale, uh, salary range. Combining this with the existing headcount and FTE, we could come up with a full picture of what the headcount is at Mitsubishi Power. And of course, we built in functionalities that you can plan each individual job type per person that you can change the job type of this person. So for example, if you have a full-time employee, this full-time employee might go and be a part-time soon or go to paternity leave. This, of course, you need to be able to plan that person A does not all the time be a full-time, but that you can, as a cost center owner, very flexibly changes according to the new plan. And of course, all this, as you do it inside SAC, enables your management to do simulations, take actions. What happens if it's all possible? And this we really came up with 
And well, what does this mean in hard facts? Because this is the rough architecture, but where does the complexity lie in SAC? Well, we needed seven data models to simulate this whole process. And as we have different data with different aggregation stages, we needed three staging models of these seven so that we can merge data together. To have all these data flowing around between the different data models, we needed to create eight data actions. Three of these data actions were scripted data actions. Why were they scripted? Well, imagine all this data coming from ECC for, ex for the existing staff. This information still needed to be sorted into the individual job types because the job types were not in ECC available, but SAC needed to automatically derive out of the name and the cost center, well, this person is a full-time employee, this one is a part-time employee, so all this information um, needed to be calculated by SAC itself. All of this ended up in three planning stories. So one where controlling department could uh, start the process, upload data, one as a staging story to check if data is correctly um, moved forward. And the last one being the one where you can actually do the input as a cost center owner and push the data forward to the overall cost center planning. So you see quite a complex uh, situation and planning process, but I would also say it's not uncommon. And that is a big point that I want to make. This is not like the super high difficult issue that we solved here, but it's something that you will encounter at other companies in the same area perhaps, because headcount and personal cost is always complicated because it's about people and there's not one system to people. And of course, this might even also be true for other areas, be it sales, a price planning, all of this could also be true there. And with this, you can see that SAC is able to do this. So now let's move on to a live demo on our Westernacher system, how such a headcount and personal cost planning can look like. Let's start with our demo. What we see here is that we have different FTE types, junior engineer and senior engineer, and we have different types of personal expenses, monthly salary and social security to keep it simple. What I do now is that I add two senior engineers and you will see that SAC now adds these and puts that in yellow and I copy it over to the other months because I want to adjust also here the FTE. And now, of course, I would like to know what happens if I click on this to my personal expenses. So we have a data action here, which I now start. I select the plan version and run it. And what now happens in the background is that the SAC calculates for each month where I have added to FTE for the senior engineers, the impact on your monthly salary and your social security. As you can have a very complex model with many cost centers and we just added a high number here, this may take a short while and then SAC will update this with the latest result and then having the impact displayed here in yellow, where you can see the results of your monthly salary and social security. This was my demo. Um, and you can see, of course, it was very simplified. But in general, with this demo, 
all of the standard needs of a headcount and personal cost planning can become true. You can simulate directly your impact from adding additional staff or removing staff. And this is what most companies need. I thank you all for your attention um, and I'm happy to have all your questions now. Thank you. Thank you.